my name's Dan and I head up the front end development team at, at SOTIC. Um, we have been building in WordPress for about two years now, um, after a business decision was made to move from uh, a CMS called OpenText. You think Drupal's bad, OpenText is. Uh, so we, yeah, so we basically have brought in a, a new team with, with me at the lead to, to build in WordPress essentially. And the example that we're, we're looking at today is, is the Lions Tour, which is just, I say just finished, it finished in July and it's Christmas now, but it's a 2017 example um, essentially. So just to, again, yeah, reiterate what we mean. First of all, let's solve the first mystery. SOTIC stands for Sport on the Internet Consultants. I know, right? Uh, and essentially what we do now is, is provide um, bespoke development uh, WordPress websites for sports clients, governing bodies, uh, that kind of thing. And the mission at the moment is to migrate clients, for, clients from open text onto WordPress. Um, and it was the lion's turn, essentially. Um, so we've been doing that for, as I say, two years, I believe. So just an example um, of the clients that we work with as well. Obviously, we've got the lions at the top, but we work with other sports as well, golf, as Simon said, cycling and, and uh, governing bodies and that kind of thing, world sailing and, and all that fancy stuff. Essentially, this was our mission for the Lions Tour. The setup was that basically there would be a content team of a third party agency that would work in the UK and in New Zealand as well. So we were basically, the question was, what can we give them other than our developers in bath rooms at 6am in the morning doing tech support uh, to empower them to actually run a successful content marketing campaign um, for, for, throughout the tour and, and for the builder. Um, so really we had five key objectives. We wanted a robust platform, both in kind of the web platform side, but we wanted a robust platform which WordPress, we knew WordPress can offer. We wanted basically the content editors to provide interactive content with minimal effort. Um, and we wanted to ambitiously turn WordPress into a sports CMS that's, that worked for us. We also wanted to look at consistent content types. So our back end has been ready to go regardless of what CMS that we use. And we have a set of metadata that we basically saw an opportunity could put it as thread content types together. But essentially, if you get the metadata right, the content will, and, and you get the content right, it, everything just works, essentially. Um, and obviously in sport, we have this concept of live matches. So other than 100% uptime and this spike in traffic that we get through matches, we needed content to be engaging, but we also needed it to meet the objectives of sport as well, that uses WordPress as a framework, but allows us to have total flexibility in, in, in the site that we build. Um, we all know about the next two, custom post types and advanced, advanced custom fields. So that's basically, providing a skeleton for con consistent content types that we get in sport as well, and recognizing why they're useful for, for the Lions Tour. And I'll, I'll go into that a bit in a bit more detail further on. Um, the fourth building block was basically our metadata and, and our back end and how we, how we basically get that to talk to WordPress. Um, and then the WordPress REST API, basically how we bring, yeah, I mean, how we brought the, the site to, to support that as well. Um, so just a quick uh, bit on our bespoke theme. Essentially, it's a product of, of two years development. It's, it's pretty solid now. There's, there's always work to be done on it um, because WordPress is constantly changing and, and people do fun stuff and, and we want to we do that too. Um, but essentially, we've got our, our boilerplate uh, CMS theme and we, we customized it for the Lions Tour so it was fit for purpose. Um, it interacts with content types we see every day in sport. So there will always be things like pre-match build-ups. I'm sure you've seen whenever you've looked on any sport website, there's interviews with the coach, there's all that, all that kind of thing going on. And it's all very visual, so you get galleries and, and video and that kind of thing. Um, our theme, again, as I said earlier, allows content editors who don't particularly want to interface with our back end or anything like that to just write an article in WordPress and everything is wrapped around it and, and, and everything just, just, they get stats and all that kind of thing. Um, and it's available out of the box or we can, so for smaller clients, we will just install it and most of the time we don't have to do many modifications, but for large clients like the, like the, like the Lions, we will, um, yeah, we will basically customize it even, even further. So this is probably something that we all know about, but essentially the three steps we had when setting up this site for the Lions were, to identify what post types we will need, um, what advanced custom fields will support each post type, and uh, how we incorporate that into our custom templates. So 
So here's, here's basically an example. So this is a meta box, which we've heard quite a lot about tonight. Uh, we've basically wrapped up a, an Ajax call on that, and you can tag the fix that you're writing an article about. And all of this stuff basically just responds to that metadata. So even if you're writing a couple of lines of a news story, essentially all of these things will just pull through because they're related. And if tagged appropriately, you, you've written two sentences, but you've, put, you've built a page like that, essentially. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that's basically our metadata that we're bringing through here. So this is all values from our database. And we're basically it, tagging articles and making them more powerful with our support stuff. Um, so yeah, so I'm, so, so I'm just going through a few examples of how our widgets are, are delivered from our API, but essentially they respond to the same values that you tag an article with. Um, and yeah, and then you get a nice sexy page essentially. And we can hook into the standard functionality of WordPress and to, the, to clients it looks like WordPress, but really we're using that as a, as a framework to build um, am quite ambitious sites really. Um, so yeah, as I said, the metadata that, that are tagged in articles is the same which powers our widgets. So the WordPress REST API, we saw this as an opportunity really to uh, always sort of superpower the news lists and things like that because there's such a volume of, of content that gets published about even around one game and you have pre-match build-up and all that kind of thing. We wanted to basically use the REST API to uh, power news lists and, and, and we found it definitely helped with technology like lazy loading and filtering and that kind of thing. Um, but what we got involved with with the Lions was to actually register custom endpoints with the API because the one thing we like is the extendability of it. So this section here essentially almost acted like we were using an MVC of the REST API and only pulling through the content that we were needing and then we were sort of, yeah, we'd cache it up and it would just, it would be fast, it would work and, and yeah, we found that really helped. And you can see in the, in the sort of the screenshot we've got there, that filtering will make a request to the API, and then you'll only get that, that kind of uh, news stories related to England or something like that through. Um, and we couldn't do that before we started playing, playing around with the REST API. What we did have before was essentially, uh, you know, you just go through to a category page, but we wanted to sort of supercharge that essentially. And that's kind of it, really. Um, it was quite a successful project. So uh, it was, I mean, we've got a nice quote there from the, the Lions Rugby uh, Digital Communications Manager. But really, we, we saw it as a success. And uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially it. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any questions on, on how we did it. <laughs> Just clap myself, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Do you get free tickets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get free tickets to smaller games, but not to New Zealand, unfortunately. I, wa I was up at 6 a.m. in my bathroom uh, supporting it, but that was about it. <laughs> and then I've got a more serious question. Because like, this is sort of like, you sort of you built your own platform on top of WordPress in some ways. So like, yeah. let's say you had 10 clients using your platform. How do you push updates out to all the sites? So we because a lot of the stuff is bespoke the sort of the amount of plugins we use is less um so if we're rolling out features to a lot of our innovation happens on new projects so if we come up with something that we can see we can back fit easily to a client we will we tend to have a process that we'll make a sort of series of tickets that will back fit to a site and roll it out um and obviously we've got a development environment where we can test that if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. so so Dan, do you do you sell this effectively as a SaaS solution then? Uh, so, so someone's subscribing to this in the knowledge that they will get new features that they didn't necessarily ask for? Um, some of it can be uh, quite subtle. So there might be performance improvements that a client doesn't notice um, that we have. But yeah, we, we kind of pride ourselves on, it's in our interest to have everything on the same, the same kind of solution anyway, because we don't want to be, we don't want sort of five or six versions of of legacy code hanging around on different sites. Um, in terms of subscription, I suppose it's difficult in our, in our context, really. They, they kind of sign up to, to the idea that we will provide them with the latest technology and, and that kind of thing, if that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, so two questions about the decision to structure it as a theme. Yeah. So, when you talk about a theme, obviously we talk a lot more about functionality there, but are there any 
does, does the theme out of the box have make a lot of appearance decisions too, or would you that be completely custom depending on the client? We tend to do okay. So our theme packages are both functionality and styling a lot of the time. We tend we've got sort of let's say two or three off the shelf solutions that, that we can provide to to sort of smaller clients. But if it's a bespoke build like this, we will tend to. Um, the functionality will almost be the same, but we'll usually style it from scratch, yeah. And then related, what happens when you get a client who doesn't need a particular piece of functionality? Does the decision to make a single theme mean that you're dealing with a monolith then and it becomes difficult to strip away functionality that you don't need? Um, or maybe say a client needs an extra custom feature that's not in it. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're quite happy we're quite happy to provide custom functionality in our theme. What we've recognized over the, the last two years is that there's always consistent functionality that people want from a theme. Um, you know, if they don't use an accordion, they don't use an accordion, but it's there if they want to. Um, but there, th there's certain things we can strip out, but usually when we interface with the CMS, it, I mean, there's no need to strip it out, really. Um, it doesn't, there's not really much support with it. And yeah, over the years, uh, what we kind of want to avoid is a task coming in going, can we have an accordion when we, we can just give them it, essentially. Um, and it's just reducing kind of post-launch work, essentially. Yeah. Hi. So, I don't mean to put you on the spot by any means, but I'm curious <laughs> if after seeing <laughs> but, um, if after seeing the talks on Gutenberg, uh, the live blogging, and even the CapGem journey, have you been inspired at all? Is that giving you new ideas? Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we, I, I think Gutenberg is something that excites us um, when it has Metabox support, as you've just seen. Uh, but essentially, we, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're looking for, we, we are always kind of looking for a way to simplify how our clients publish content. And I think Gutenberg does, does do that. Um, obviously, we won't, I don't think we'd roll it out straight away. Um, but we would certainly, we'll certainly be integrating it into our, into our offering, yeah. Um, but in terms of being inspired, yes, definitely. Yeah. I have a second question, if I may. Yeah. Follow up. Um, and do you contribute back to the community? Is any of the stuff that you guys are doing coming back to WordPress anyway? Yeah. So we, um, uh, our WordPress team are mostly based in Cardiff. Um, so we're part of the Cardiff WordPress uh, group there, and, and we contribute that way. Um, we definitely, after after tonight, when we've heard about the, the sort of Gutenberg feedback and stuff, that would be really good for us because we're all about metadata and that kind of thing. So we could definitely get involved with that. Uh, but yeah, um, I think one of the things we are looking more to do is contribute more to the WordPress stuff because it's difficult because we are quite niche. We don't know if we're completely off the mark or, or not, but I hope we're not. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely we'll be looking to get involved a bit more. And that's why we're here, essentially. Awesome, not off the mark at all. Yeah, <laughs> good, good. Told you. <laughs> well, folks, I'm very conscious that we've run incredibly over time, but can we thank Dan and the Celtic team for coming? Thank you.